All right, welcome back to Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 83. Today on the show, man-made horrors beyond your comprehension continue. This time, a guy is taking hormones so he can chest feed his newborn child. We have a big Trump versus DeSantis update you're not going to want to miss. Target wants to be the next Bud Light in this week's Cringe of the Week. Then, a guy gets his arm ripped off by an alligator while pissing behind a bar. And a lady gets her car stomped in in one of those street takeovers in Urban Decay. And last but not least, we have the biggest announcement in show history coming in about 20 seconds. All this and more, it's Fluckus Talks, a podcast, episode 83, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fluck Stocks the Podcast featuring Richard Bradbury. All right, guys, we have a huge announcement. Biggest announcement in show history. Would you agree, Richard Rapway? I would. Fleckus Talks, the podcast, has signed a deal. After years of turning basically everybody down, we finally found the perfect match. Fleckus Talks, the podcast, has signed a deal with the National Pulse and their brand new Pulse Plus platform, which can only be described as a MAGA Daily Wire. Pretty good, right? Fair. This new partnership is allowing us to expand our show. So you might be hearing this and wondering, oh no, does this mean there's gonna be less public YouTube episodes? And the answer to that is no, actually, it's the opposite. If we get 2,500 signups to the Pulse Plus platform, we'll be expanding our public Fleckus Talks the Podcast show to two times a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. Along with that, if you sign up, you'll get a 30-minute bonus land, which will be coming out right after the public episode on Friday on the Pulse Plus platform. You'll also be getting a mailbag episode where Richard Rappoy and I answer questions from you, the audience. And we'll also have some guest right-wing commentators doing those mailbag episodes as well. Besides just us and this show, you'll also be getting exclusive content and commentary from Raheem Kassam and Steve Bannon. How about that team? Fleckus, Richard Rapoy, Raheem Kassam, Steve Bannon, all on one MAGA network. That's pretty much as good as it gets. That's why we held out to make the deal. We, we've spoken to every other you know, group in the industry, and they're all great in their own way, but it was not a fit for us. We are very happy to have made a deal with the National Pulse and Pulse Plus. So if you go to fleckustalks.com today, you can sign up. The first month is free, which is a great deal. Uh, it's $90 for the year, which ends up being about $7 in change per month, which is affordable. Guys, it's not $2. I know that, but it's not $15. You need to support the content creators you actually like and join us on this mission to create the MAGA Daily Wire. It's a great group of people. I wouldn't sign a deal if it wasn't perfect for us. All of this bonus content will be rolling out in the next month or so. Go to FleckusTalks.com today. Join us on this mission as we grow this new platform and make it exactly what the right needs. It's a new way to consume news. It's a new way to consume content and media. There's gonna be an app that's rolling out as well. This is a fantastic group and we're happy to be partnering with them. Fleckustalks.com is the website. Go there today, sign up, support us, help us expand the show. Two times a week public episodes. Guys, that's the dream, right? Yeah. Fleckustalks.com is a website. Go there today. All right, housekeeping. Hey, what's up? I'm excited. The Pulse Plus thing is great. Yeah, very good partnership and a lot of cool stuff going to come from that. So Yeah, and we're excited. We've been working hard on the show, and now we're finally able to expand and take it to the next level. Yep, and if the people support us, we're doubling our output and uh, going to be more regular. Yeah, so, you know, Tucker's gone for now. Crowder's Crowder, doing his thing. Beat his wife or something. I don't know. <laughs> I just heard the headlines. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. That's like <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it's like, you know, take the Flagus Talks episodes to two times a week. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great move. All right. What's causing heart attacks and blood clots this week? Nothing, because I guess COVID is over, but strokes in young people are up and it's baffling doctors. What's the headline? Uh, doctors are searching for answers as stroke risk rises in young people. So what could it be searching for answers? And they're just looking up here. They're looking up here. They're not looking where in the details, look, I guess. You should look right here. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right there. What could it be? Okay. We have a very important housekeeping this week. We have three pages of housekeeping. 
Uh, we have a lot to get to. We also are on a time crunch. We have a lot of clips, so we're going to have to move quick. There's no doppelgangers anymore. We're not doing doppelgangers. But Richard Rapoy, over the weekend, you went to a pool party. Yeah, pool party, and then uh, my friend drove me there. So should we? Yeah, should so we what go? happened at the pool party? Here's you going down the slide, it looks like. Oh, man. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. A little bruised, a little bruised up. So you were a little banged up, and they took you home in the pickup truck. Yep. And you had to go on the ba- in the bed because you couldn't fit in the back. Yep, pretty much. There's me in the back. Oh, <laughs> oh man. A lot of people sent me that water slide guy, for, for, <laughs> and they didn't say Richard Rapoy. They didn't say Richard Rapoy doppelganger. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, and but then, I'll let you have it. You got there first. And then, which is cool, outside of the show, you got an ad deal for an intermittent fasting company. They used your body shot? Yeah, this is my exact body type. <laughs> Which one's you? I'm uh, age 65 plus, and Just I'm headless. The, no shoulders the, either. The full balloon. Yeah. The full balloon body. Hey, I don't know what this ad is really trying to even do, but they <laughs> caught my attention. It looks like an AI ad. Yeah. Where it's like an intermittent fasting ad. And you show the fat, but none of those fat bodies are like. Even existent. Yeah. In existence. <laughs> and, it's not, and it's like the changes by age. But, like, I don't think it, you know. You just get fatter when you're 65? I don't know. <laughs> it's, like, perfectly round when you're 65? Yeah. All right. That's weird. All right. Uh, DeSantis. Wait, 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 wait. There's a real one of you, too. This guy. This is really you. Yeah, that's really me. Doing some kung fu type shit. I'm pretty good. Yep. Same build. Actually, same. this guy might be This guy might be a little. No, I think that's me. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, same hair kind of too. Yeah. Obviously we didn't get a haircut yet. Uh, I know it's getting bad and out of hand. I think next week we'll get a haircut. Who do you, who do you, we, I don't coordinate my haircuts. Well, I just with mean you. I okay. and then we. Okay. All right. So yeah, I think we'll get a haircut next week. I don't know, man. I'm back and forth. I like to think, you know, uh, you know, we're 30, 30 years old, 30 plus 30 P. Mm-hmm. Um, I have great hair. Let it grow. Yeah, that's you true know? too. So I have great hair. There's a lot of it. It's everywhere. People think if you buzz your head, it's just like you're trying to cover up your baldness. Yeah. That's not what I'm doing. Yeah. So it's almost a shame to buzz my head. Exactly. Um, All right. Yeah. We'll let it grow. I think (laughs) next move for me is going to be a mullet, and I'm just going to shave the sides, and we're going to do a real mullet. Uh, If we have good signups for Pulse Plus, maybe I'll put that on Pulse Plus next week. Oh, okay. I was cringing over here. Mullet. Yeah. (laughs) But all right. You think that's stupid? (laughs) No. I don't, I never, like, you're the kind of guy who would never have a mullet, is what I thought. But now you're, I guess, switching. You're yeah, proving me wrong. I'm switching. All right, we have to get through housekeeping. Okay. <laughs> uh, the DeSantis announcement on Twitter happened a couple days ago. Yep. Uh, it was a big Twitter space. They crashed the Twitter uh, thing. Um, I think bigger picture, Elon is trying to bait Trump to get back on Twitter. I think so, too. Yeah. Because Elon even tweeted uh, or replied to a tweet and someone said, would you ever vote for a candidate who wouldn't do a Twitter space? And Elon said, nope. (laughs) So (laughs) I think they're trying to get Trump back on. Trump will come back on Twitter. Twitter will become like the best app ever. It'll have all these other things going for it, too. The money, the the long form video content. It seems like Twitter is positioning itself to be the best app ever. And I think if Trump comes back, it'll expedite that process. It kind of sucks for me personally, who was never like Twitter when it was really bad. It was like, ah, who cares about Twitter? Yeah, you know. Now it's like, oh, it's the best. All right, I gotta yeah. start doing stuff on there. That you know? happened to me too. I don't even use Twitter. I just re- reply to people and go, "LOL." Yeah, or like, ha ha. It's like, bad. <laughs> I know. You're, Here's it's my bad. email. Email me. Um, but yeah, Elon uh, had a Twitter space with DeSantis. He made his announcement. You know, they introduced him. DeSantis read his little speech. It was pretty good. Um, you know, here's something that's interesting. My dad, very smart guy, Republican, Trump supporter. He would consider voting for DeSantis. Like he is, he does like DeSantis. Uh huh. My dad doesn't have a Twitter. I know, doesn't know how to work it either. Yeah. So there's a lot of people. I think like Twitter, everyone thinks everyone's on Twitter, but it's really like journalists and like people who are actively millennials, uh, constantly online people, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, constantly online people. Like people like my dad, who is like a boomer and, you know, isn't social media savvy. He didn't even see the announcement. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> So. I thought the funniest part of the announcement was like uh, Elon Musk goes, you know, this is great. We can just have a conversation and kind of, you know, freestyle it a little bit. And then DeSantis immediately reads a <laughs> <He> statement. Just <laughs> goes, <laughs> yeah, this is a conversation. We can yeah. freestyle. DeSantis goes, I am tired of this woke yeah. agenda. That's why I, you know. Yeah. 
And I like DeSantis. I hate this. I don't like the primary between the two. I think it hurts both unnecessarily. But DeSantis, you know, he didn't really differentiate himself in any major way um, from Trump, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. Yeah. And I'm also noticing DeSantis isn't the best, like, retail politician, like, person to person. Yeah. He's a little, like, autistic and weird, which is fine. Like, I am too, probably. Yeah. You definitely are. So, I get it. But, it, you know, there's a clip that kind of stood out to me when he went to go visit some people at a restaurant. Let's let it play. How are you doing? Good, sir. Wow, look at this. You guys been, hi, how are you guys? Good to see you. Kind of like a diner. Over here and- go right over here? Yes. Okay. Come Good deal. In. Good deal. Thank wow. You. Crowded, huh? Uh, Good. Hey, no how are you doing? It smells really good, I'll tell you that. So we'll do it. Okay. This is the part that confused me. Good. What's your name? I'm Tim Anthem. Okay. How are you? I'm wonderful. It's great to be up in New Hampshire. Oh, how are you? <laughs> I'm Tim Anthem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's like you don't even introduce yourself and say, hey, I'm Ron DeSantis. Oh, to be fair, are you nitpicking a little bit there just because, like, he is the governor, the event is for him? Yeah. I just want to find little things that I don't like <laughs> anything. It could be anything just to go against him. Okay. All right. As long as you admit it a little bit. Yeah, then. of course. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, of course. Because I don't care. It's like, okay, yeah, you know who I am. I'm here for the event. But you still gathered. introduce yourself. You're not, you have to be a humble guy. You have to be a humble servant. Hey, I'm Ron. Nice that's to meet fair. you. You're that, Tom. I'm Ron. That's fair. Like, that would be, that would be cool. That would be normal. Um, but I am nitpicking for sure. Um, I just want to get mad at him for anything. So cool. he couldn't just wait for 28. That's what I Everyone say. Everyone would like you. You help Trump. Trump gets elected, hands it off to you. 12 years of conservative leadership. You couldn't just do that. Now you have to fight with Trump now and we have to make us make a make an enemy of us. Yeah. That was stupid, Rob. Ron. <laughs> and yeah, Trump is, uh, is calling him Rob and stuff. Rob, my red button is bigger, better and stronger. On so, <laughs> social, like he's just doing bits. He's doing references. And I saw someone like both sides are going so crazy. It's like, just be neutral. Let the game play a little bit. You know, so I saw somebody tweeted like after this Trump social media post, like Trump is unhinged and like ungovernable or like, you know, some stuff like that. And it's like, he's doing a bit guys. Like yeah. let's, everybody relax, you know? Exactly. Yes. It's interesting that you bring that up. Can you read that full truth social post by Trump? He said, Rob, my red button is bigger, better, stronger, and is working. Truth. Like, he means truth social because the Twitter glitches. Uh, yours does not, per my conversation with Kim Jong-un of North Korea, soon to become my friend. <laughs> like, he's just on one. So Trump called him Rob, which is Rob DeSantis, which is interesting because I had a photo made. What's the word when you have an artist make a photo? Uh, commissioned. Commissioned, yeah. By Richard Rapoy yeah. of Rob DeSantis, which is Rob Smith and Ron DeSantis put together. There it is. Which is fantastic. I've had that on my wall we've, for like We've shown long... that on the show, right? We have, yeah. Okay. The first one was stolen by a street rat in New Orleans. I had to order two. Yes. yes so yes, someone yes. opened it. And did... So what I'm thinking is, you know how time goes forward and back? No. <laughs> <laughs> Time's a flat circle. Everything that happened is already happening or is it going to happen? But once it happens, it already happened or whatever. Okay. So it's like I had the Rob DeSantis photo on my wall. I didn't know Trump was going to call him Rob DeSantis. Trump then calls him Rob DeSantis. But then I already knew that because it's on the wall and it already happened. It just hadn't happened yet. Schizo corner things. Just schizo corner stuff. But that's like, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I do have the Rob DeSantis picture. I can't argue. I can't argue. You can't argue that. Okay. Okay. I think that made sense. We have to move on. We were only on the first page of housekeeping. We're going to run out of time on the show. I know. I know. This is actually bad. Keep going. Make sure you guys tickle this post. Uh, it will help us juice the algo. You guys have been doing great with that. It helps so much. Leave us a comment. Tickle, tickle. Uh, let's focus on that like button. Click like. Perfect. Please do that now. It helps us with the algo. Tickle the post. Juice the algo. Okay. Oregon City. or uh, Oregon, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oregon City, Oregon uh, is having their audience choose the name of their street sweeper garbage truck thing. Yeah, and it's an Instagram post that has 10 likes, and it says, Today starts National Public Works Week, and we're getting everyone involved. Head over to Oregon at Oregon City Library, where you can, where your kids can submit a name for the city's new street sweeper that will be <laughs> arriving soon. So, guys, this is an opportunity. There's only 10 likes. Whatever we submit is going to win. You have to go to the library, though. You have to go in person or to yeah, the website? you have to go to the library. You have to head over to the Oregon City Library, where your kids can submit a name. 
Pete, can you head over to at like the at? Uh, no. Okay. I, I, think, I thought it was different. I think this might be. <laughs> Let's just overwhelm the Instagram post, which is linked in the description. In the description, it's City of Oregon. City of Oregon City. Yeah, is what it's called. That's why it has ten likes. Yeah. Um, let's head over to City of Oregon City and let's submit Snarf Snarf O'Banion as a name. It looks like a Snarf Snarf. Look at him. Yeah. He's got a little Snarf Snarf to him. Yeah. And it says your idea here. Imagine it says Snarf Snarf O'Banion, the truck or whatever. That or Rob great. Smith. Either one. You got to tell the audience one way or the other, but I don't think we're going to have any influence either. We're just going to flood if the comment can, section. If we can flood the comment section, they'll have to acknowledge it. And then if their only options are Snarf Snarf O'Banion or the next one in second place is Rob Smith. That's how we trick them. They go, oh, snarf, snarf. I don't know what that means. Let's just take Rob Smith. That's smart. an easy one. That's the second place easy smart. one. Okay. Let's keep it going. We are actually really behind right now. We're going to go fast. You know what I realized the other day? What? I was watching Family Guy, a show I like and I've liked forever until it got woke and anti-Trump. You know what's stu- so stupid about this show? What? Obviously, the writers hate Trump, right? Yeah. Fine. You guys are liberals. You live in LA. You hate Trump. I get it. But they can't be objective with their writing. Peter Griffin, a buffoon, right? A, a moron. He's an idiot. He's, He's like a, good, a drunk Boston Irish Catholic. Middle class, works at the beer place, drunk with his friends, friends with the cop. Yeah. You're telling me Peter Griffin's not a Trump supporter? But then all of a sudden, Peter Griffin's smart and knows Trump's bad and he's above Trump and thinks Trump's stupid and they just like make fun of Trump and they say, oh, Trump's stupid. I'm Peter Griffin. I'm smart all of a sudden. Yeah. So it's like, wouldn't you guys... They can't stay character consistent. They can't. And like Joe the cop, the paralyzed cop. Yeah. He's a a big Trump guy. He likes Hillary, I bet. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you couldn't even just be realistic and like, oh, yeah, some of your characters like Trump, wouldn't they? You say they're buffoons, but it's no, they're smart now and they know Trump's stupid. Yeah. That's so stupid. Brian shouldn't. He's a pseudo intellectual, thinks he's smarter than he is. Like I'm writing a book, you know, yeah. he would be perfect to like Hillary or hate Trump. Um, exactly. And that's why there, and that's why there's like that hick lib meme, mm-hmm. the hick lib, uh, like the Yellowstone, Yellowstone character. Yellowstone meme, yeah. Like people, they write, they have these rugged characters who would think a certain way in real life. And then they just go, well, oh, shit. My daughter can marry whoever she wants. Uh, you know, <laughs> like they do all that stupid shit. Yeah. So it's a common trope in writing. For sure. All right, moving on. We're still in housekeeping. We have two audience updates from last week. Uh, remember last week um, how we said that, that there was that guy in Urban Decay who had his car destroyed? Yeah. So the guy in Urban Decay had his car destroyed, and then we said, if this is you... Hit us up. We'll send you 500 bucks. He was crying because his car got broken into. It was totally ran through. He felt violated, all that. Violated, felt bad. We felt bad. We said, if this is you, hit us up. We'll give you 500 bucks towards repairing it. He found us. (laughs) (laughs) He found us. Um, So you got to pay that debt, huh? And I paid the 500 bucks. And then he said, thanks, man. Excited to check out your show next week. So he probably doesn't even like us. Highest customer (laughs) acquisition cost of all time. Yeah, the customer acquisition cost is $500 for that one. Um, (laughs) And he might not even like it. Yeah, hope you love transgenders as much as we do. Um, And then on the other end, we lost an audience member because someone got mad. This is the message I got. And this is from a a woman? I like an old lady. Just an older lady? Okay. We're not mad at. Yeah, we're not mad at. This is just what happened. Have been a fan a long time. Not so much after last night's episode of laughing at a goose getting kicked by a horse. Low-hanging fruit. Not funny. Not cool. God bless you. Best of luck. So God bless us. Thank you for that. Um, That's the line. (laughs) We've been through so much, and it's like one duck getting kicked by a horse that we only use to do a headline about it. I don't even care about that duck. I know. It was great seeing that duck. (laughs) <laughs> you like with the way she thinks. Yeah, it's like, that was awesome. That was hilarious. That Animals was, dying is great. That was not the point. It was like an urban headline. That clip is from who knows how old. Like who cares? We've made so many jokes about like transgenders and the N word and like all these things. But then the goose getting kicked was the final straw. That's so, the line right there. Sorry to see you go. And it, I mean, it's funny. It's just like a kind of a case study in like what little metrics will like totally blow someone off. Like that pit bull, like someone who has pit bulls, they're like, fuck you guys, you know, yeah. whatever. I get that, whatever. But, um, you know, to discount everything, to just be gone. I didn't is, think we hit a beehive with that one, but yeah. apparently we did. So funny. Um, all right, keep going. We are in housekeeping. I have a little bit of a confession to make. Okay. Um, it's going to sound bad, but it's the truth. I'm not proud of this. 
When it comes to my laundry, the machine I have in where I, the place I live, I don't know how to work it. There's two portals for the detergent and one's for something else and one's for the detergent. Soft fabric softener, maybe. Something like that. And I don't know which is which. And all I do is I fill the cup up all the way with the detergent and put half in one, half in the other. <laughs> and then I get a little bit more and I pour it on the clothes inside the thing just to be safe. I think that that's good. I think uh, if you pour it on the clothes just to be safe, that's like, that's fine. That's all you can do. Yeah. That's and fine. So that's what I've been doing. It's not, it's not, uh, it's embarrassing. Yeah. You're like not even a real adult sometimes with some of these things. I know. And it's like, you could easily search that on your phone. Hey, model LG 3200 washing front loading washing machine, which is the detergent slot, but you won't do it. Mm-hmm. And so. then when we first moved to New Orleans, remember I, my, all my clothes got ruined. Yeah. Cause they got smildew smelly. Mm-hmm. And I had to throw them all away and buy all new clothes. And then remember how all my clothes get cooked in the dryer too much and they all have holes in them and I yeah. cooked all my clothes. I'm having like a hard time. Yeah, you're incapable. You need and a then, wife. You, you need a wife or something because you can't know. do it. And then Jerry eats all my socks. So it's like now I have this thing where I just buy like 100 socks at once and then I basically just like they're one or two use. Yeah, you forfeit them after a while. So it's not pretty. I'm barely keeping it together over here. Okay, let's move on. Um <laughs> Speaking of Jerry, I'm pretty sure I taught Jerry the dog, my dog, UFC. We've been watching UFC on Saturday nights, and he's been watching intently, and he knows these dudes are fighting it out. He doesn't understand why, but... He doesn't know why, but he knows that they're not happy with each other, and they're fighting. And then I go to the TV, and I point, and I say, UFC, UFC, and I think he's getting it. Smart. Smart. Can't do your laundry. You can teach a dog to watch TV, though. So there's like... Tale of two cities. Yeah. I'm not fully a moron. Yeah. Um, all right. Speaking of fighting and UFC, you know what else I was thinking? Hmm. You know how there's all these um, Russia, Ukraine war casualties? Yeah. And you know how the U.S. did basically a regime change in Ukraine like 10 years ago and installed Zelensky as like a Muppet? Yeah. What was that? 2015? I think 2014, 2015. Okay. Yep. They had like a little revolution and then they installed Zelensky. Yep. And then it's like, hear, hear this out, similar to the past wars we've had. When you have a massive war with a ton of casualties... The chads that are dying in the war are probably the chads that would oppose the corruption that's being installed. I agree. So if you wipe out tens of thousands of Ukrainian fighting men, Mm -hmm. who's going to stop Zelensky in a couple years when they continue to launder the money and do all these horrible things? Yeah. The men willing to take up arms are already gone or already thin, at least. Yeah. So like that was that's kind of and that's kind of maybe what happened historically, too. Once you like hit the population of like capable fighting males and you get them down and you decrease that population, your chances of corruption success are way up because the people that would have stopped are now dead. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That's, That's a great point. It's a coherent thought. It's a coherent thought from the guy who can't do laundry. It's a balance. All right, moving on. Uh, this was a funny tweet from Ryan Long Comedy. Um, guy I like, very funny. He has a show too. Check it out. Uh, it's just this assembly member and his name is Harvey Epstein. Tough break. <laughs> Tough. That's, that's pretty much as bad of a name as you can come up with. Yeah. Middle name Clinton, Harvey Clinton Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's rough. All right. Moving on. This is our last piece of housekeeping. Uh, Richard Rapp, well, you know me, right? You know me, dog. Yeah, of course. I'm a big free speech guy, right? For sure. You have to be, right? Mm -hmm. Free speech is so important. Number one rule, right? We're a big free speech group here, but we are facing a little bit of a dilemma. And I want people in the audience to comment and tell me what you think the solution to this is. On our way home from our runs, whenever we see, we live in kind of like a hipster area. Whenever we see trans flags or trans posters on the telephone poles, stapled to the telephone poles, Mm -hmm. we rip them down, rip them up, throw them in the trash can. And free, free speech purists will say, don't do that because one day it'll happen to you. Mm-hmm. But I say to that, it's already happening to us. Yeah. And on top of that, it's already happening to us and we have the good idea of like not transing the kids. So it's already happening to us. And then the ideas that are supposed to be let go free are you should trans the kids. So it's already happening. And we're told that, oh, you can't do that to slippery slope. You'll be next. We're already next. I agree. Um, so you're justifying it. Yeah, exactly. Cause like trans kids is a bad idea, yeah, right? For sure. And if we're free speech purists, we have to pretend that all ideas are equal. Yeah. Which, free speech purists also, you know, minor attracted person 
is also in there, you know? Yeah, exactly. So. And like, you have to pretend that every idea is objectively equal, which it's not. And it's a slippery slope if you start doing free speech things. It, we've already fallen very far down the slope. So it's like if we were in this neighborhood and we were posting, you know, kids can't consent, let kids be kids, that sign would get taken down in 10 seconds. Yeah. But I need to respect everyone else's right to free speech, take the high road, even though the opposition to us doesn't do that. Yeah. It's like instead of thinking ideologically, you need to think realistically, like realism. Yeah. Like who is your opponent? Who are you facing right now? What are they doing? What ground are they taking? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's like, you know how libertarians are like, you know, do what you want, leave me alone. Yeah. And then what people want to do is like ruin the country and fuck the kids. Yeah. And it's like, then that eventually does affect you. So it's like the same way that libertarian shortcomings kind of lead to this chaos is like what's going on with free speech too. And it's like, I am supposed to just defend to the death the, these people's right to say whatever they want to say, but what they want to do is destroy the country and fuck the kids. And like the founding fathers even said a republic will work if the people have are, are moral people. Yeah. And we're not that. Yeah. So it's like I have like this tough time with free speech where I need to respect everyone's free speech, even though my free speech isn't being respected. And then I need to like lose with morals because it's the right thing to do while they people who don't respect the Constitution or care about America want to just destroy it. Yeah. Isn't that a little weird? Yeah. They want you to be the noble loser. Really yeah, bad. I need to lose with morals, which I don't fully understand. So let me know what you guys think. You know, is us taking down the trans thing? And ripping this is it like up? a sign attached to like a pole that has like, you know, a wooden pole that has a bunch of staples. It's just like a little advertising. It says protect trans. Kids. It's not like someone's possession. It's like a flyer. You know it's what I mean? It's a flyer. Yeah. Protect trans kids. And we just we rip it up. But I guess that's not free sound if you respect free speech. But we're not in a time where free speech is respected. We're in a war. Yeah. So how does that balance? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think we're doing the right thing. We've wrestled with it. Because if we posted a kids can't be trans, don't kids can't consent. It'd be gone in 20 minutes. It would less. be immediately gone. Yeah. So that's the reality. Mm -hmm. And it's like now we have to still do the right thing, even though everyone else is a loser trying to cheat. I don't think so. All right, moving on. We're out of housekeeping. That was a long housekeeping. We're getting to trans cringe. Are you ready for our first clip? Yes. Uh, the kid being sterilized, that girl protesting. Puberty blockers combined with prostate hormones are sterilizing kids. Are you aware of that? I mean, I sterilize them, but if that's what they want, why do you... Oh, so now it's okay to sterilize them if that's what they want? I mean, if that's what they feel, okay, they're not going to have kids, of course, because they want to transition, no. But, like, if that's what they, if that's what they make, they make them feel good, why does it matter, matter, matter you? So, a minute, so just, let me get this straight. A minute ago it wasn't happening, but now if it is happening, it's good? If it's what the kids is asking to be in order, in order to survive in the society, mm. why does it matter to you? So 10-year-olds can consent to their own sterilization? 10-year-olds can say, I'm not a boy. Or, can they consent to their own sterilization? They can say what they feel. Do you know can what? they consent to their own sterilization? I mean, they can, I don't know if they can, they can consent, but there are children and they can tell you. They cannot consent if you've been told them boys and they're telling you, I'm not a boy. They didn't consent to you. But you think it's okay to give puberty blockers to 10-year-olds and then cross-sex hormones at 13? I mean, if, if that's what they want. If that's what they want. If that's what they want. Yeah. So she doesn't have a coherent thought in her head. And she's like a student. She wears glasses and goes to college and is probably on a scholarship. She's <laughs> smart. A lot of the things we're going to see in today's cringe and urban decay are just like the fact that colleges are just so useless and far gone. And there's going to be a common thread in this episode where it's like people, a lot of people are significantly dumber than you think. Yeah. And there, I think that's a problem that happens with a lot of leftist thinking is you assume that everyone's like pretty much your intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we'll get into it more, but we have a lot of examples. Yeah, everyone is, turns out is a moron. Yeah, pretty much. And then like this person and these types of protesters, all they're doing is like going against whatever straight white Christian males are standing for. Yep. So like, oh, that's the problem. That's white supremacy. That's the patriarchy. We have to go against that. And they're not even looking into the other side. They're just saying, oh, whatever this straight white Christian male wants, I'm going to take the opposite side. And part of that is they're fighting on emotion. They don't know details. She didn't know that they were giving kids puberty blockers. She didn't know that those are used to sterilize prisoners. Like all these talking points and things that are the base of the rights argument against this 
crazy man-made horrors. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know any of them, you know? And yeah. it's like, that's part of the battle too, is they keep those facts away from their side. And that's all we talk about. And it's like a base level, you know, fact about it that, you know, she just doesn't know. And so she'll fight. Exactly. And this is a person who goes to a college. Are we sure about that? Or I think it was like a, at a university. Yeah, for sure. All right. Next, uh, let's hear from another spokesperson for the trans movement. That that was the dumb ish side, the uneducated side. This is kind of the more uh, we're we're going to be balanced and give the smarter side a look. Yeah, right? this is the smarter side. Oh, that's good. Does she go on for the whole minute? I think so. Oh, she runs out of breath after uh, 58 seconds. Wow. You need to listen to her. She's a serious person. Yep. She's a serious person. I guess your argument is null and void. <laughs> <laughs> now that she yelled for a minute straight and was out of breath. Well, there's the other side. Get ready to debate. Yep. Um, all right. Let's go to the guy who's transing himself from male to female and then taking hormones so he can breastfeed his baby. Achievement. Trans women can indeed lactate. You would follow the Newman Goldfarb protocol, a medical protocol designed to help women, women induce lactation if they were not like getting pregnant themselves. I'm going to be a mother. Um, that's in the works, in the process. And part of that process is that I am working to induce lactation to be able to breastfeed our youngest child. Yeah, actual, actually mommy Naomi. I've actually already successfully induced lactation. Like I can actually make milk now, um, which has been a, a very, a very interesting and very cool experience. It's like very biologically affirming too, <laughs> which is something that's like gate kept from trans women, like so, so difficult, both motherly and- Gate kept from trans women. So that person Person is making male nipple demon secretions to feed to a baby and pumped full of hormones that baby if the baby gets it the hormones like it's gonna be milk like this which is <laughs> <laughs> the horriblest worst cottage cheese milk ever yeah it's chewy it's got a hairy nipple and it's chewy <laughs> hairy nipple and it's like this trans person is like putting on a show yeah, they're like a performance, like a, they're like a method actor. Yeah, it's Daniel Day Lewis, the <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis of being trans. Exactly, the like, Daniel Day Lewis of trans people. I give milk to my baby. Um, yeah, and so it, it's another one of those things where it's like, yo, that milk to the baby, you know, it's not good. Like this person probably has beliefs about like giving cows hormones and stuff, and like won't do like mm -hmm. dairy or something. You know what I mean? That type of person. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just like. You're doing this whole thing so that you can feel good at the expense of anyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even a newborn baby, just to affirm yourself, it doesn't matter the effects, positive or negative. It's like, it's about you. It's about you, the man who does the fetish shit. Yeah, at the, literally at the expense of a child that needs food. Exactly. It's like um, a newborn baby that needs to eat. Yeah, and then I did some background research on this person, and uh, guess what? They have an OnlyFans where they try to pump their little male breasts to oh, have milk. I remember seeing you on their OnlyFans and I was wondering what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, so it's all fetish it's shit. It's all for the show. It's all fetish shit, guys. Yeah, oh, well, that's a that's a long-term problem. My search history on computers and stuff, yeah. my file names, like, what are you looking at? Uh, my yeah. algorithm for Instagram even is, like, pretty botched at this point. Yeah. It's all freak shit. Yeah. So, hey, man-made horrors beyond our comprehension and uh, let's see how that baby turns out. I'm, yeah, I'm oh. sure that'll be in the non-binary category soon enough. Soon enough. Um, all right. Next, let's go to the girl who got a zero for saying biological female on an essay. Yeah, this is uh, in the college, the college vein. Let's oh, check yeah. in on colleges, see how they're doing. I got a zero on a project proposal in my class because I used the term biological women, which is apparently not allowed anymore. She even said it was a good project proposal. Um, but I got a zero because I use this term and it's exclusionary and not allowed anymore, so. And I 100% know that this is like the most biased grade ever because my project is about transgenders competing in biological women's sports. Wow. So colleges are over. Yeah. You can't even write about the thing because you used a term that you need to use for that argument and it's, it's gone. It's over. You can't even, yeah. And it's like, now you have to like go to college, pay all this money 
and learn opposite stuff. Yeah. It's not even like hidden or like, you know, discreet like it used to be. You're just learning straight opposite stuff. Yeah. Where's your nose? Right here. It's like right on the side. Right here. Right on the side. <laughs> Where are your eyes? Right here. <laughs> yeah. Where's your belly button? That's the nose now. Yep. Right uh, in the middle. Um, and it, yeah. So, I mean, colleges. And it's like, what do you expect this girl to do? Like, go to the head of the department and be like, hey, I got a zero here. It's like the teacher just does this thing where you have to fight now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, yeah, teachers, professors love when you go over their head. They grade your papers really easy after you go over their head, and then they remember your name and obsess over you yeah. and target you for the rest of the year. Yeah, and if the teacher gave you a zero, it's like, I'm sure you'll be treated well for the rest of the year. Yeah. The best thing that girl has going for her is going viral on like right-wing Twitter. Exactly. There is a career there. You can <laughs> Riley gains this. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but, you know, that's it, and that's the outlet. And so, I mean, colleges every day, every day we see a new little piece of news that trickles out that – discredits, discredits, discredits. And then also during that time, the price goes up, up, yeah. up and the value goes down, down, down. So again, colleges, man, unless you're an engineer, unless you're doing high level math, unless you're the janitor at MIT solving equations on the chalkboard overnight and then saying, leave me alone. And then the professor comes and he says, you can do math. I'll, I'll, I'll get you out on bail. Mm, you know what I mean? I know. Does that ever happened. happen to you? I, it sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> it might have I might have seen something like that. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's go to the men can get pregnant. Asking that question in the hood versus Columbia. Asking people if men can get pregnant at Columbia University. And then we're going to go to Harlem and ask the same question. Do you guys think men can get pregnant? If you identify as a man and you have the reproductive parts to get pregnant, then yeah, you can get pregnant. Like it's a yes. Obviously it's a yes. There's no other, n- no question. Someone that identifies as a man can have a uterus and, and potentially get pregnant. Can men get pregnant? I want no part of this. Well, yes. Yeah, yes. yes. Do you want any part of it? Uh, no. What do you guys think? Can men get pregnant? I don't know. A lot of people have been telling us they can. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's outrageous, bro. For men, we're here to, like, you know, put the seed inside the female. We're yeah. not f***ing, what's who call them? Seahorses. We're not that. Yeah, we ain't no f***ing seahorses. We f- to get them pregnant. Men cannot get pregnant. That's BS, because they don't got a uterus. Hello. They don't have uterus. Man is never going to have a baby. So people that's thinking like... So there you have it. Another example of how college is useless. Like you can't believe the most basic truth. And it's kind of like that bell curve meme. You know that meme where it's like the stupid guy, the guy who thinks he's smart in the middle, then the smart guy in the end? Yeah. And it's like the stupid guy and then the smart guy are both like, yeah, men can't get pregnant. But then you have like the intellectuals in the middle who are like, oh, men can get pregnant. Yes, of course. If, uh, if you say men can get pregnant, it's just like, okay, I know you went through an indoctrination center. Yeah. And I don't know if that was high school, if that was college, if that was, you know, a website, if you were on Reddit too much. Mm-hmm. I just know you got churned through a machine and you got corrected, you know? Yeah, exactly. So those hood guys in Harlem are smarter than the Columbia people just a few blocks over. Absolutely. Uh, but they're working on getting the hood people. They uh, want them next. They want them next, which is why Lil Uzi Vert, is that his name? Yeah. He's a rapper. He's becoming trans. Check this out. Lil Uzi Vertical now goes by the name Leslie Chow. It's in his Instagram bio. He He's took a recent too. trip to Thailand and captioned it, Leslie was in Thailand and has this whole new look. He's dressed up in all pink and he has new hair. And it looks like he isn't the only one doing something like this. Lil Pump recently took a selfie with these earrings and jacket and the game commented on the photo saying the rapture is coming. Mm, that's good. A good At least sign. some checks and balances, the game there. Yeah, so the rappers are making the rappers ladies, which is like a tale as old as time, but it's the next generation, Lil Pump and then Lil Uzi Vert, yeah. and he goes by Leslie Chow, yeah. <laughs> which is the Chinese guy from The Hangover. The Hangover, yeah, which is <laughs> Mr. Chow, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's this, they're coming for the hood people. Yeah, they want all the answers to that street interview to be, yes, men can get pregnant. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, moving on, that uh, Wachowski brother, who is now a girl, did an interview, and they said that uh, trans porn is what got them activated. To be honest, like for me, the, the, the people that I saw, the, the first images that really struck a chord with me were, you know, uh, trans women and pornography. And um, there was something that um, unlocked in my brain that I saw these uh, wonderful 
fearless performers um, becoming these um, becoming desirable. And That's good. Yeah. So you admit it. He admitted. Oh my God! He admitted. <laughs> He admitted something in my brain got activated when I watched trans porn. I was watching porn. My brain flipped. And yeah. now I'm a lady. You completely admitted it. You got MK Ultra. That's the people. That's the one of the directors. The Wachowski brothers directed the Matrix. Yeah. And, and they were brothers when they first directed the Matrix. And now they're both trans and got Matrixed. Yeah. Which basically proves MK Ultra. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Because <laughs> there's two in one house. It's two, it's two brothers going to two sisters. It's like they gave you the same MK Ultra treatment. Then you watch the the trans P O R N, and then you you got you got trans yourself. They got activated. You said the word activated in my brain. It's like yeah, that's how it went down. <laughs> it's really too perfect. The accidental like oh, I'm in a panel. I'm discussing this my journey, and it's like porn brain good trans. <laughs> like it's crazy to me. And uh, you know that's the same thing that's happening to a lot of these fucked up kids, right? Who are of course attempting to get on puberty blockers that that other woman said didn't exist but they do and now she says they're good after just finding out about it because you're a white guy yeah and whatever you stand for has got to be the problem because we've been trained to know that yeah uh what's his name cam Kasky. yeah i don't know this guy cameron Kasky on cameron twitter Kasky. he's like a david hogg type mm -hmm. uh, david hogg light he's a little bit smarter than david hogg but he's still kind of stupid he was replying to Megan Ke uh, Kelly posting about the Sports Illustrated trans person. Which we covered last week. Which we covered last week. Um, and then Megan Kelly says, Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover. What is the rest? She said, uh, basically, Megan Kelly says it will be a turnoff to teen boys. And, like, it'll alienate teen boys who want to watch, look at Sports Illustrated. And then he said, uh, I don't know about that one. Number two, see above. Ma'am, you're a joke, blah, 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 blah. So Cam Kasky likes trans people. He likes tranny. He thinks tranny, they're hot. Tranny boys. He thinks they're hot. Which yeah. is, and he thinks he's an intellectual too, and he's smart and progressive. But it's the same bell curve meme again, where you have the person in the middle going, "Yeah, she's beautiful. That's a beautiful trans woman who's beautiful." And then the stupid person goes, "Nah, I don't like chicks with dicks." And the smart one on the right goes. It, mm, I'm not attracted to biological males masquerading as females. Yeah, <laughs> so in a like, smart package way. You know, it's like that's the meme all over again. Like you have like these like pseudo intellectuals think they're smart, and then like the sides they're taking are so like, oh, you're castrating kids and having sex with men. Yeah, liking highbrow, li liking the trans guy to uh, own Megyn Kelly to yeah. dunk on her on Twitter. Yeah, so. exactly. You gotta suck a trans penis to own the conservatives. Have fun with that one. Enjoy. All right, moving on. Target is now getting boycotted because they had all, I mean, everyone's seen it, all the trans stuff. Yeah, burn down the system, uh, homophobe headrest, and it's a guillotine. Uh, if I cannot inspire love, I will cause fear. Satan respects pronouns. The tuck friendly bathing suit. We've all seen it, right? Mm -hmm. For the most part at this point. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I actually, uh, this is obviously not financial advice, I bought puts. Yeah, how are they? Do you, there, you, it's the target's been going ding, 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 ticking down like ten percent this week. Yeah, so I'm in the money and I'm doing well. Um, I'm gonna keep holding them and hope it goes down like Bud a Bud Light. Okay, but basically, it's like anytime I see like a right wing uh, boycott movement, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna buy puts. Yeah, it's basically short the stock for sure. Not a full short, but basically, yeah. Um, You're not actually affecting the price. It's a derivative of the price, but yeah, exactly. You, know, you don't want to have a short position out there. And then there was a guy who went into Target and then took one of the cardboard signs down and like put it on the ground. Yeah, you want to play? Yeah, it? Let's play that clip. That there is no insert. There's nothing on it. So, so he hits the thing. Doesn't do any damage. You know, puts it on the ground, he stomps it a little Disgusting. bit. Disgusting. That's demo worship. That's demo worship. That's demo worship. And then a congressman or a senator? Yeah, Senator Scott Wiener, who's like... That pervert guy. That pervert weirdo. He goes, Target is removing LGBTQ pride products because of terrorist behavior like this. Yes, this is absolutely terrorism, and Target should be ashamed for caving in, just like Anheuser-Busch came in, caved in. And people wonder why there's so much fear in our community. And it's like, he calls that terrorism. But when BLM burns down the city or, or, you know, looters steal from a store and don't get arrested, people get pushed in front of a train and don't go to don't go to jail. 
that's not terrorism. Those are the voices of the unheard. Yeah, that's a <laughs> exactly you know, or mostly, some stupid. It's a mostly peaceful protest. Yeah, but when you have this guy take a piece of cardboard down and step on it and like lightly damage a piece of cardboard. That's called terrorism. That's hard T terrorism. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Fun um, living here. And I want to say something about the Target thing in general. Like, we are learning a lot about boycotts and stuff like that and what actually works and uh, the sh- the social shaming of people going into these places. Um, there's different degrees, right? Like, Bud Light. Bud Light is a male-dominated beer brand. It's a pure brand. And light beer is basically a commodity. It's interchangeable. You know, you might have a little bit of a preference or a a trend, but it's a commodity at the end of the day. You can buy many others like it. It's a high competition zone. Uh, The NFL. The NFL, when they were doing kneeling and stuff like that, not a big alternative. That failed pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's an anchored in industry that they didn't go too far. They were just, the players were annoying to a lot of people. Um, and, and then we have Target, which is a big store with a lot of different departments, but they went egregious with this. The tucking, the satanic shit, um, you know what I mean? The specifically targeting kids. And so I feel like we're learning a lot about who we can actually boycott, who we can have an impact on. And Target is definitely one that I think people should, if they can, stay away from, you know? It's not, it's a big women thing. Mm-hmm. You know, women love Target. It's kind of a meme, like going to Target for a a pot and then spending $280. Like that's a meme amongst the women. Um, And so we're kind of learning who we can hit and who and what can happen. And I think brands are going to be learning that too. Mm -hmm. You know, like the North Face did their cringe gay Patagonia drag queen ads. Mm -hmm. The truck company, the F-150 with the butt plug or whatever. Yeah, the F-150, It's instead of the truck nuts, it's a butt plug (laughs) in your exhaust and then the car explodes. Um, But yeah, so... I mean, there are degrees and levels to this. And I think people are too dismissive, like boycotts don't work or like, and it's not even a boycott. Like I thought we were against cancel culture, you know, that sort of like weak take. And it's like, it's not cancel culture. It's like spending your dollars on places that you want to don't want to fuck your kids. Yeah. That you want to don't worship the devil. Exactly. It's a pretty low bar guys. Cancel culture. Um, and then I, I also just want to say that Gavin Newsom said something like blah, 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 target. They they're boycotting target. Uh, who's next? Blacks, Jews, uh, something like he, he, he rattled off a list. Asians, who's next? And it's like the, my first thought is just, Oh, Gavin Newsom. I'm so sorry. Did we try to stop you at the way bottom of your super slippery slope and say, Whoa, that's too yeah. far. Like the slippery it, slope has already slipped. It's, it's like you're poor, doing hot, you know, tuck your kids into the, in the bathing suit, tuck yeah. their dicks, flip your dick behind. So it's tucked in your butt. You can pretend you're a girl and you're a kid. That's what Target wants you to do. They have like the devil thing. They have devil worshiping Satan likes pronouns. And it's like, oh, yeah. Gavin, the slope's already slipped. Oh, did someone try to interrupt the bottom rung of your slippery ladder? (laughs) Like whatever it is. It's just like so amazing to me that someone can be incensed that we're mad about this. Um, And so I say, you know, it's not cancel culture. We're not saying Target can't exist. We're not saying ban Target from Twitter and ban Target from uh, the the internet and from banking, the banking system. We're just not going to shop there. I'm just not going to buy Bud Light. You guys like have an economic power. And as a group, we can wield it in a way that takes $9 billion off of Target's market cap. Yeah. And like soon, soon there's going to be some sort of checks and balances going on. Like they have ESG, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like soon there's just going to be a conservative guy kind of like looking at everything. They're going to have some high up VP con- of conservatism who's like, yeah, we should stay away from that. Yeah. Like, no, don't do the <laughs> satanic shit. Exactly. Because um, they have a, a, a duty to their shareholders, yeah, fiduciary right? fiduciary duty. So like, it's like. And can, the board specifically. You get, exactly. Like you have to basically wipe out the board after this one, right? Because it's like, guys, you didn't see this coming that half of our consumers aren't okay with worshiping the devil and, and trans kids. Like, yeah. Or the board has to wipe the CEO because the CEO sent yeah. an internal email. They kind of doubled down. They, they backed off, but they also internally are like, hmm, like we did the right thing. Yeah. So um, I'm never going to go to Target again, but I don't go to Target anyway. Yeah. So but it's I not really. Puts and I'm trying to make money off it. Yeah. Which so is smart. We'll I'm keep smart you guy. updated. And he always holds options and uh, shit coins and whatever way too long. So he's a kind of yeah. a just a degenerate. It's called being a bag holder. Yeah. I'm exit liquidity. 
<laughs> nice to meet you, pretty much. All right, let's move on to the non-trans part of cringe. The guy who has his arm ripped off while pissing behind a bar. Just play the video? Yeah. So, so he's drunk, pissing behind a bar, and then he falls into the lake. And, and his that- friends come up on him as if he's just, like, laying in the mud, but his arm's gone. Hey, come here. Come here, bro. Hey, this nigga got bit by an alligator, bro. This nigga, what the fuck? Yo, grab my hand. His whole arm came off, bro. He's going in the shock. Yo, Yo bro. Grab the other arm. What's I'm going to shine the light. I'm going to shine the light. Get him the fuck out of the water. You're good. You're good, dude. You're good. You're good. You're, good. You're, good. You're out of the water now. All right. Roll him over. Roll him over roll, and put a roll, tourniquet roll, on him. It's his right roll, arm, dude. too. Assuming he's a righty. It has to. I know, I know, I know. Hey, it listen, has bro. To, it has to. Stopping the bleeding. He has a hold of that tight. I know it's gonna hurt. I'm stopping the bleeding. I got gotta you. Gotta stop the bleeding, bro. It's your brachial artery. I have to stop. Right, here we go, 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 go. Okay. A cigarette guy knows what he's doing. That's a good guy to have there. So his arm's completely gone. Must have been a big old gator, man. And he's like really drunk. Yeah. He'll probably wake up tomorrow like, oh, what happened last night? What did we do? And then, oh! Yeah. No, imagine that. Like waking up after you've been drinking like, oh, my God, I told Stacy she was hot and she totally dissed me. Yeah. Oh, my God, I accidentally farted or like whatever yeah. dr- weird drunk thing that gives you embarrassment. And then it's like a gator ripped off my arm uh, behind a bar. Oh, my God, I don't have arm anymore. Yeah, that's rough. I don't know. Not uh, an endorsement for alcohol. Not a good endorsement. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on. Uh, the women who made the ten thousand dollar shade, the shade for one. Yeah, what, how do you explain this? They, basically, it was like a woman-driven project to improve uh, shade for people waiting for the bus. Yeah, and then they made this thing that's like this big, and it gives shade to like one person. And then yeah. they all went out to go see it, and they look at their faces. You can kind of tell. That they knew they fucked up. Yeah. So basically, um, this was part of a gender equity action plan to address the needs of women who rely on public transit. And as we know, the sun obviously disproportionately affects women. Of course. You know, men, they're fine. The sun, they can handle it. I love how half of these things, they just start by like an assumption. Like they go, and of course, women are disproportionately affected by the sun. Mm-hmm. And then all these women, they, they go... Like this. We're disproportionately affected by a lot. Yeah. So, And then nobody ever explains it. Nobody ever explains the reasoning why they are. Um, And so they held a press conference to proudly unveil the exciting new improvement to the, to the bus stop in LA, which, and they call this a La Sombrita, a shade and lightning, uh, lighting pilot for gender equity action plan to address the needs of women. And this is what it looks like. It's this big. It's not even wide. Like you said, look at everybody's faces. They're all Everyone's baffled. looking and they're all like, oh, this is great. And they know deep down that it doesn't do anything. It's, it's, suppo- it's supposed to cast a shadow, but, you know, a covered bench, you know, you can't have that. I guess a homeless guy might live there. He then? would live in there as a house. Yeah. So it has to be something that a homeless guy can't live off of, but it does provide shade and it cost $10,000 for the prototype. And there it is. It's $10,000 for that piece of metal attached to that pole. $10,000. So this is a lot of issues at once, like gender equality, uh, government waste and bloat, and then like PR slash marketing for something that is ridiculous. So this is yeah. this is your government on leftism. Exactly. And this is also why they need to make us so stupid. So when we see things that are like 100% the way they are, and we can by our eyes tell they're retarded, we we need to be stupid so when we see blatantly stupid shit we don't call it out and notice it yeah so we have to see that and go oh that's great woman's project made it so women can get shade at the bus stop oh that helps women they want you to take it at face value and not critically think at all about how much of this cost and who it's benefiting and what it actually does yeah and where's the shade and how many people can fit underneath the shade and is it actually helping people avoid the sun yeah but you have to be stupid they have to make you dumb so you don't notice when they do blatantly dumb shit in front of you. Exactly. And there was this Slate article kind of roasting it, which Slate is so leftist. Um, so if they're roasting it, you know you botched it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it said, innovative and shade aren't words that usually go together. Like They're trying to reinvent how to do shade. And they botched it so bad. For that, the reinvention is just way off. So there you go. Pissing your money away. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, we're still in cringe. The Brittany Griner didn't sell out the stadium. 
Yeah, you want me to play the video? Yeah, this is the coach. Brittany Griner made the, uh, her, his. I don't know. <laughs> her his, comeback. Hers. For, yeah, exactly. It was it was great, but like honestly, come on, LA. Like we didn't sell out the arena for BG. Like I expected more. You know, to be honest, right? Like it was great. It was loud, but um, how was how was it not a sellout? How was it? What not is a this sellout? guy talking um, about? What is this gentleman but, going on about? Why would why would you sell out the Crypto.com arena of twenty thousand people for a WNBA game? What is that dude even thinking? It was Brittany Griner's return. That guy has no sense. Um, no clue. The way people were going to, oh, everyone showed up. 20,000 people were here to see the WNBA game. It's like, oh, I'm going to put a straw and then I'm going to drink up the lake. And it's going to go. And it's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, it's not, that doesn't, it's not, there's no sense. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, and Brittany Griner uh, said, Brittany Griner says national anthem hit different in first WNBA game since returning from Russia. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you needed to uh, you needed to go to a Russian prison and be involved <laughs> in a merchant of death prisoner exchange to to understand that America's not that bad. Exactly. And shout out to the merchant of death. He got a great deal. He's lucky that there's like a black trans apologist in the White House, you know? He's very lucky. The timing worked out for him. It's he, a high value trade for I, I our think, end. Oh, yeah. And he had been waiting since like 1999 or whatever. So he just had to wait until the conditions were right. A, re a retard uh, feminist brought weed to Russia. Joe Biden, a Muppet in the White House. And he goes, yes. He's, he's like looking at the chessboard. We'll trade the black trans person for anybody. Yeah, it's it's basically an unlimited card. So, um, All right, moving on. Last piece of cringe. The, the professor with the dreadlocks attacks the pro-life people. Yeah, circling back to colleges here. Yeah. You're not educating shit. This is fucking propaganda. What are you going to do? Like anti-trans next? Is that what you're going to do next? Yeah, I mean, should. We're, we're about this is bullshit. This is violent. You're triggering my students. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You're, no, you're not. Because you I'm can't sorry. even have a fucking baby. That so you don't even know what that is. That's you don't true. even know what this is. Get this shit the fuck out of here, bro. This shit. So then the person was confronted by a reporter after and then they she pulled a machete on the reporter here's that at her house away from my door get the f away from my door let's let's get out of here holds the machete to his neck so this person this person has no impulse control the emotional intelligence of a toddler I and is like 40 something years old and a professor 45 year old professor at a college at a college she educated Oh, yeah, she the best. And she's in charge of kids and students, and she has zero impulse control. And it's interesting when you attack the pro-life thing, it's like if either side of the two sides, pro-life or pro-choice, the side that should be upset to the point of like physical violence would more likely be the people who are mad about you're murdering the unborn. Yeah. Not the people who are, you know, like, isn't it? It's almost the whole thing is backwards. Not the people who are trying to make you deal with the consequences of your own decisions and like non birth control and whatever. Yeah. You know? It's like the people you're you're ending a life. Yeah. So, yeah, this is just another example of how college is a joke. She, uh, she, she got arrested, I think, and fired, right? Yeah. So she's fired now. She's arrested. She's in court to, uh, Thursday. We're filming this the day before release. She's in court today. She had also been some color on the like who this professor is and who's hiring this type of person. She had also been arrested during 2020 George Floyd riots. So it's like they go, oh, no, no big deal. I'll just wait until she holds a machete. My favorite thing is if a New York Post reporter or some reporter who hated you came to your door and was like, hey, we're looking for comment on this bad thing we caught you doing. It's like click lock the door like, oh, God, they're here. <laughs> you know, you just hide. And you're like, fuck, like yeah. whatever. Instead, she gives them the best clip and worst thing she could possibly give them. Shows you how dumb people are these days. And so uh, stupid. And peop and this goes back to our theme of colleges suck, and you can't even imagine how dumb some people are. Yeah, you know what I, I mean. We all think people are smart. Oh, you went to college. You must be smart. She's a professor. She must be brilliant. You're a professor. You're an educated black woman. Oh, you must be smart, guys. We need to really reevaluate everyone. Assume everyone's a moron. And what's your trick? What do you do? You've been talking about this. What is it? I forget what you're saying. Um, Fleckus goes, 
we were, oh, yeah. we were talking about de-escalating or like getting in a fight with someone. And then it's like, wait, before, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. it's basically my thing now is like if I ever see any sort of violence or anything like this, or if I'm talking to someone. Um, it's getting heated. It's getting heated and they're challenging me. I'm just going to say, hey, really quick before we go on, do you know what three times three times three is? And then it's like, oh, and, you know, if there's any hesitation and not an uh, immediate 27. You start doing this. You start yeah. counting. Then it, or you pull out your phone or you go nine and go, okay, this conversation's over. I have Wish to you the best. Peace be with you. I'm going to have to go. Um, all right. That's probably the end of cringe of the week. The lady got arrested, right? We said that. Yeah. 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 She She's arrested. arrested. She's in court today. Um, you can't guys. Turns out you can't put a machete to someone's neck and threaten them when they just nicely knocked on your door. Yeah. I thought professors knew that. I was wrong. Exactly. All right. We're moving on to urban decay. This week's Urban Decay is a very good one. We have two pages. Let me make sure. It's we got on. a lot of stuff today. We have three pages of Urban Decay. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. We'll have to cut some stuff out. All right. Well, um, Bonus Land's going to be lit then. Yeah, Bonus uh, Land's going to be lit. A lot of stuff is going to get moved. And Bonus Land's going to be right after this episode is done. It'll be available on Pulse Plus. Or you can wait till Monday for Patreon, but we're getting people off the of Patreon onto Pulse Plus. So. Yep. Right, uh, not right now, but right after this episode's done, Pulse Plus will have bonus land. All right, the lady who got her car jumped on. Yeah, this is a, a common thread for us, at least. We always say we hate takeovers. We you, ne- you should never go to them, blah, blah, blah. This is one lady's experience after a nice Sunday dinner with her husband and her friends. That guy's sweatshirt says, love never fails. Broke your rear windshield. There's a guy in the car. There's a guy in there in the soft top. And it's a soft top. All right, that's good. So the Love Never Fails guy is my favorite. Yep. And there's no police there to stop them. So you can't, you have to get out of the car and try and reason with the mob. Yeah, reasoning with the mob. I mean, a lot of the police, like I've seen reports where they, a lot of times with these street takeovers, they say, well, we get the license plate and we investigate it, investigate the next day. And it's like, what about the people that are stuck in it? Yeah. Like, and then it kind of makes you think, like, who's in charge? Like, who's in charge of this town? Is it the cops? No. And it's like, is it the people and the best interest of the people? No, it's these criminals. It's whoever can gather 50 people at one and time doing whatever they want. Yeah. And then it's like, this is like a kind of like a little hello from George Soros. Yeah. It's like a little George Soros calling card where it's like, you have like these street takeovers. It's chaos. The cops don't do anything. Innocent people are hurt and have their property damaged. And it's just a little, Hey, how are you from uncle George? Yeah. <laughs> also, if you don't think there's a racial aspect to this, where like a white middle-aged couple who like these people see as an enemy and who had their turn at the country. Yeah. Like if you don't see it as a racial, th- these are all, all black kids jumping and immediately going to destroying someone's car because of a minor slight. You drove through the takeover. You drove through the open road that we took over. Yeah. Enjoy the, uh, the, f- five grand in damage to your car. And then we saw these people on the news doing a report afterwards oh, yeah. and they're doing the facing away from the camera. So like the camera has their backs. They don't even want their identities out there because of this mob and who might retaliate. So. Exactly. And what you said was exactly true. Like the looting, the street takeovers, the burning down of the businesses, like all this general aggression, it all has like an anti-white sentiment to it. Of course. It's all one thing. It's all like that same like resentment and like a class struggle. And it, yeah, it's very ugly and getting worse, especially into the election. Yep. Uh, let's go to the fight at the airport next. Yeah, this is at O'Hare, my hometown airport. Oh, Chicago, that toddling town. Look at this trash. We want to pay specific attention to the white people trying to break up this fight. Yeah. This guy in the tan in the back. He's just trying to go like, guys, please, no. So this is something that you just can't get involved in. 
Um, if you're someone who's like innocent and needs help, like I got you. But if if it's this, it's like I'm just not even looking. I'm just getting my people out. Yeah. If you if no, hey, you see you guys fighting. Does anyone here know what three times three times three is? No. You All don't right. even have to ask it in the mob <laughs> situation. <laughs> so Orson goes nine, and it's like, all right, we're out. And then I just completely get out. And yeah, you can't get involved because you want you want to. If you're like a nice guy, you want to help the innocent. Or if like a woman gets punched or something, you have to go stand up for her. But if it's a situation like that and no one knows math, I am not involved. It's the wild, wild west, and it's like that's kind of like animal kingdom behavior. And it's like when the, the group is fighting, like I'm retreating. I, I have nothing to do with this. I never, I don't fight in an airport. It yeah. would never cross my mind, you know? Exactly. Um, and they're at baggage claim. Do you think they just got home from a vacation? Mm, I don't know. Well, if you're in baggage claim in Chicago, I'm guessing that means you just got home, mm-hmm. right? From maybe a spirit airlines fr- from a spirit airlines flight to maybe a tropical destination. So you want, yeah, you went, you, yeah, you relaxed, you had a good time. And now it's as soon as you get home, it's time to fight at baggage claim. Yeah. I, I just don't get it. And my three times three times three rule isn't really discriminatory. Is that the right word? Yeah. At all. Yeah. Because you don't have to be rich to know math. You just need to have parents that care. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's plenty of poor Chinese kids that have no money, but the kid knows math and becomes doctor. Yeah. The parent run the parents run a restaurant and they slave. They work uh, 18 hours a day to put you through school. You become doctor. Yep. And that happens all the time. So it's like if you're if you don't know three times three times three, it's like no one sat you down and said, hey, math is important. Maybe I don't even know it that good, but I know you need to know it. Or, hey, let's read a book for an hour every night. So it's not like a a rich thing. It's just like a parents that care thing. And if you have just really bad parents, you're going to have really bad kids. And those really bad kids are going to do really bad things. And I just can't be involved in that because I had good parents. Yeah. uh, My parents, you know, for me, I don't fight at the airport. Period. Yeah. It's not really even an option. It never crosses my mind. Someone could say, like we've said this before, someone could say the most insulting <laughs> shit on earth and be like, okay, my Uber's here. Yeah. I really have to go. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. Good luck Go- with that. Goodbye. Um, exactly. And, uh, th- these people want to bring you down to their level. They want you fighting in the airport. They want you like yelling, fuck you, motherfucker. And it's like, yeah. do not, obviously our show watchers, nobody's going to do anything like that, but don't even try to help. Let them sort it out. Yeah, if you can't do three times three times three, that's what you get. Mm-hmm. You get this chaos. Yep. All right, really quick, Jordan Neely update. Uh, his uncle, who was trying to collect all the GoFundMe money, was arrested the other day for having stolen credit cards. Yeah, the uncle, who never helped Jordan Neely while he was having schizophrenic meltdowns on the street, is now in the news. Uh, he, he And actually, it's hilarious because he called for no plea deal for Daniel Penny over Subway Chokehold. And he was arrested in NYC after being caught with knife and several stolen credit cards. Mm. So let me just read this, actually, because this is pretty funny, the situation. Um, Christopher Neely was arrested Monday night after running away from a police pickpocket team that confronted him at the Port Authority bus terminal. So there's like an incognito pickpocket team who's looking for exactly people like him. At least they have that. Exactly. That's good. Yeah, it's a good step. But I'm sure it's undermanned and the... They probably let him go. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, well, so he was wanted for a string of larcenies in Manhattan when he was approached. Uh, after police caught up with him, Neely was found with several credit card and debit card bearing other people's names, including at least one that was reportedly stolen during a prior pickpocket. He was also carrying a gravity knife. I don't know what a gravity knife is. Is that like a springy one? Probably. Um, sources say police charged Neely with criminal possession of stolen property, resisting arrest, bail jumping. So he was out on bail during that uh, and unlawful possession of a weapon. So... Just overall good guys in that family. Yeah, another you know? astronaut locked up. Yeah. Another astrophysicist off the streets. We'll never know what he could have accomplished, but... It's interesting that every, pretty much every single like BLM type of thing that the progressives rally around is like a hoax. I know. George Floyd, this guy, every single one is just a hoax that you have to be a moron with your head in the sand to believe. Yeah. And all it is is just going against the straight white Christian males... You know, like that's like the, the fun. Oh, white people are saying that he actually wasn't a good guy and was being aggressive on the subway. But it's like, I don't want to listen to white people. Another black man's dead. Yep. Like that's how stupid their thought process is. All the progressives. It's sad. Uh, it's well, a, it's ugly. Let's see here. Let's move on. Um, I have an interesting point. You know, reparations are important. 
Yeah. And you know how like the going into the elections, like reparations are demanded and then the Democrats kind of promise them, but then always don't deliver. And they just basically string along. It's a carrot, a carrot and a stick. It's a carrot and a stick. And they're stringing along like the black population with this like hope of reparations. Mm hmm. Couldn't one make the argument that black people owe everyone else reparations because of the crime and violence and stolen bikes? Couldn't one make that argument, Richard? I think one could make that argument. I I'm not saying it's me. I wouldn't make that argument right now on the show, but I could see a pathway to victory. Where one could make that argument. For reverse reparations. It should be reverse reparations, one could say. Um, yeah, and also I think uh, I saw someone tweeting about this, but I think BLM – the organization BLM is going bankrupt mm -hmm. already. Like they had huge losses. They misspent the money. They're on the uh, teetering on the verge of bankruptcy. So I think that's already like giving us a case study on how reparations might go. Yeah. Like that was within two years. We're back to, uh Oh, bankruptcy time. Exactly. So I hope I'm sure they'll find a way to get some BLM donations before 24. You think 24 so? Election. I'm sure they'll find a way to ramp it back up. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, the two. Well, hold on. I will say, and Daniel uh, Perry or Penny is mm -hmm. it? Penny. Daniel Penny. Apologies to Daniel. Um, he. That was the first time I've ever seen his GoFundMe way outperformed the victims' yeah. GoFundMe. So that was great to see. It's it's like the tides are turning. Boycotts are working. Bud Light is fucked. His GoFundMe's fatter. You know, like people are really sick. There are little signs ticking up and around. Where people are really sick. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving on. Um, the gay guy in San Francisco gets killed by two black people, and he's not. They they weren't charged because they're too dumb. Yeah. So, just interesting. This is it's a, a man and a woman. Two blacks rob and murder a gay white man in Twin Peaks, SF. And yesterday they got a mistrial because they argued the shooter was low IQ and high on opioids. They even stipulated they shot the man, so they admitted it in court. Right. They added that Miss DeCure, who is the sidekick, had a low IQ, a lack of adaptive functioning, and suffers from stress and anxiety. As a consequence, they said she did not act consciously when firing the gun. Yeah, and then another quote was they weren't moving with convincing thought. Yeah. And so it's like... And the jury was deadlocked. They're going to go to trial again. So we're not yeah. saying like this. They they're got away off, with it. Yeah. But but like this mistrial happened and the argument is their IQ was too low to understand what they're doing. So like they're too dumb to be sent to jail. But isn't that who should be sent to jail? Yes. People who murdered someone and the reason they did was because they're too dumb to control themselves. Yes. That's who should go to jail. And so a couple little facts here about the case. This guy was 71 years old when he was murdered. And he was a photographer and a passionate guy. Like, you know, we do bits on the gay stuff and the gay culture. We have no problem with this guy who's a gay man. You know what I mean? He didn't mm -hmm. deserve to die. Mm -hmm. He's a normal person. Oh, well, close enough to normal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but so they He's were normal adjacent. So they were smart enough to target an old man who can't defend himself, 71 years old. They're smart enough to recognize the value in a camera that they're looking to flip and sell for opioids. But when it comes, and they're smart enough to know bullet fire gun, gun go boom. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the trial, oh, dude, yeah, we, they're so stupid. I didn't even know what was going on. I couldn't see anything. That's a good point. They're smart enough to know they were stealing a high value item and target a, a guy and who target a guy who's older and can't weaker. fight back. So it's like, it, and exactly these these dumb like, there's always some sort of sob story like he had a 60 IQ and was executed when he when he barely even knew what was going on. It's like. Why did he need to be alive if he's prone to violence and a 60 IQ? That sounds like a recipe for someone who will kill at a, a, a the drop of a dime, you know? Yeah, that's who should be locked up. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and I think Mimetic Sisyphus was tweeting about this. He said, the only time the left considers IQ is when they're letting criminals out of jail. Other times it's like, no, 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 no. You can't say IQ You can't anything. say there are IQ differences between populations, between people, between anything. IQ doesn't matter when you're trying to get a job, right? We can't. Uh, but the only time it matters is when they want to let someone, a violent criminal, out of jail. Yep, exactly. All right, moving on. There was a person, we're still in urban decay. There was a person who said that all the, we're talking about gun crime, how all the red states are the ones that actually have the highest gun crime. Yeah. So what's the original tweet? Um, they said they have Republicans in charge of their states and their gun laws. The crime rate is higher in red cities. 
and she lists this thing of St. Yeah, Louis, right, Mobile, right. Birmingham, Baltimore, Memphis, Detroit, Cleveland, New Orleans, Shreveport, Baton Rouge, Little Rock, Oakland. Oh yeah, red, red <laughs> New Orleans, <laughs> red, red Baton Rouge, red deep Oakland. Red. Um, and then it's interesting because we're gonna we'll, we'll we'll show this in the background, but it just lists everyone's a Democrat. Exactly. So basically, it's like the the what the gaslighting claim is. Oh, red states are actually the ones with all the gun problems. And then they list all those cities, which are clearly not red cities. And why isn't the crime happening anywhere besides those cities? Shouldn't it be happening all over the state? It's yeah. just happening in Baton Rouge and Oakland. All those Trump voters. All those be. Ma yeah, MAGA country over there. Uh, but the real problem is the blue Democrat DAs and the Democrat mayors. Of course. So here in the background, we have every city that's mentioned, and it's basically every single one is a Democrat. The DA yep. is Democrat. It's a lot of times George Soros backed. And then the mayor is Democrat. And that's why the gun crimes are so high, because they let the criminals go. And yeah. they don't enforce the law. But they try to gaslight us and say it's red states that are the problem. It's a very consistent thing that the left tries to do is own it, own the South. They're like, well, look at this map of who can't read and who who's violent. And it's like the South. And it's like, oh, you kind of just said black people. But you, <laughs> but you didn't know it, you know, because yeah. that's who's there. Yeah. Um, so, red cities, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to Baton Rouge. Let's go check out the jail in Baton Rouge. It's all the white what guys. The, yeah. See what the dynamics are. Um, so it's kind of like a cell phone, but they ignore it. They don't, they don't listen to the criticism of the cell phone. Yeah, you exactly. I mean? All right. Moving on. Um, there was a, a black Jamaican woman who had some things to say about American blacks that came to stay at her Airbnb. Jamaican people stay here, I have Jamaican people stay here, I have white people stay here, I have Spanish people stay here, and I have black Americans stay here. I'm not saying not all black Americans are bad, but the ones that came to my place have been nothing but problem. Only two good ones came here, all of them. Fight late at night, not with me, with each other. They're disrespectful, they're entitled, they're un unappreciative. And it is that way because America has spoiled them and give them so much free shit where they think they could come to Jamaica and get the free, same free shit out here and be nasty about it. I'm not saying all of you are like that, but because of that, I'm not risking my health and my happiness for people. No short-term stay. No short-term stay. It's not going to happen. Interesting. Isn't it interesting that any critique of black population in order to be received properly or it can be said without saying, oh, you're racist, has to come from a black person. You have to like launder it through this lady. Yeah. You have to launder it through a black person to say a, a criticism of a, an entire population. Yeah. You can't you can't notice the pattern on your own. But once yeah. she does, you can go, oh, OK, I, I, <laughs> that's plausible. Yeah. Um, which is actually funny because. Do you want to go to the Ann Coulter yeah, thing? Yeah, Ann Coulter had a funny tweet, too. Ann Coulter said, NAACP issues warning to African Americans to avoid visiting Florida. Employees in restaurants and tourism industry brace for a 0% drop in tips. <laughs> so she's just saying, like, the, the old trope that black people don't tip well. Yeah. Which is, like, a common thing. Like, that's, you talk about servers, whatever. And so... I was looking at this. Somebody posted Ann Coulter's tweet on Reddit being like, oh, she's just outright racist now. Yeah. And I was surprised that a lot of the Reddit comments were like, eh, she cooked us on this one. And they mm -hmm. were like, eh, I agree. But a lot of the comments were exactly what you said. People were being like, I worked with a black server waiting tables. He used to call the tables of black people grenades because they'd blow up in your face. And it was all laundered through a black person's opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had and, to launder it. And so, um, uh, I don't know. Who's a waiter? Any waiters or waitresses here? Did anybody have an experience? Who was the worst tippers? I don't know. I've never been a waiter. Maybe. But I've heard a lot. Yeah. You know? I've heard this a million times, but it's like I'm thinking, if I'm like thinking like Tariq Nasheed, right? Yeah. And Suspected white supremacist <laughs> Austin Fleckus. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking like Tariq Nasheed, maybe I would think, that black people are actually good tippers, but all the staff thinks they're bad tippers because of like a racist stereotype. And then they avoid those tables and don't do as good of service on those tables because they think they're bad tippers. And then they end up being badly tipped because of that bad service. It's a so self-fulfilling. It's a, a self-fulfilling thing. It's a preconceived notion. It's a stereotype that ain't true. And then you act like it is true. And then you end up doing bad service. And then you get a bad tip and go, oh, see, I was right. 
That's how Tariq Deshi would probably explain it. Yeah, he'd frame it really well. Really educated. Yeah, exactly. All right, last piece of cringe of Urban Decay. Uh, the man trap. The guy tries to sets a man trap, which is probably illegal to do. This is not in America, I don't think. It's Australia, it sounds like. This guy coming up to a jet ski, eh? He goes, oh, I could use this jet ski. I could take it for myself. No one's protecting it. And he gets falls in the man trap. But here in America, he goes, oh, my fucking knee. <laughs> here in America, that guy gets let go. And then the person who set the man trap is probably going to go to jail. Oh, for sure. You can't for do sure. that, you know? It's like, imagine explaining to your grandfather who fought in a war why you can't. You can't man trap a- someone stealing your property. Yeah. Imagine explaining that. Well, we can't get too depressed. We can't get too down. Let's move on to some uplifting gold. We have great uplifting gold that's going to make everybody happy. I think we're still on schedule. Do, do you? Well, we're, we cut some stuff, but that's okay. going to be in bonus land, which is going to be on Pulse Plus in just a few minutes after this. Immediately after the show. So sign up for Pulse Plus. Support us. It'll go a long way. All right. Thank you. Let's get into the guy riding the bike. The dog smells the pole. Praying he doesn't stop to smell the pole. <laughs> he's not completely wrecked. You shouldn't be riding with the dog like that if you don't know how he's going to handle it. You tied the leash to a handle that can just go like this to you, not yeah. your seats or anything like that you might be able to save yourself with. Just yank the dog. Again, people are dumber than you think. Pretty much everyone's stupid. Um, all right. The Golden Singers. This is uplifting gold in a more literal sense. That's good. That's, a, that's just gold because they're covered in gold paint. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> you get it? Obvious uplifting gold. And it's actually down low gold. It's downlifting gold because they're so small. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't even think of, to judge them on their size. <laughs> um, all right. Kids saved by the empire and the tornado. Yeah, this is a near-death experience. This is uplifting. Little dirt devil. The empire saves him. That's uplifting. That's Americana. A little dust bowl at the baseball game. Good for the ump. Yep. Speaking of baseball, did you know that there's uh, male softball leagues that are really competitive? No, I had no idea, actually, before you sent me these. So neither did I. Um, and I'm an athletic guy. I, I played college football, so did Richard Rapaway. I can throw a football 55 yards from my knees. From my knees. I've done that on camera. Those who know, know. I'm athletic, right? Mm -hmm. I want no part of whatever this softball thing is. You want the hitting guy? Yeah. It's called the hot corner. Look at this. Jeez. Boom. Just whipping it. I want nothing to do with that. And there's a guy pitching, too. Pitching underhand. Look at this. Nothing to do with that. Zero interest in playing softball like that. All right, let's move on. I get it. I get it. You get it, right? Yeah. I just never saw anything like that. It's fast. Guy changes the light bulbs in the tower. Yeah, this is a, a video that goes viral once every six months. Yeah, we have no audio for it because of copyright reasons, but this guy climbs this tower once every six months. He's paid $20,000 per climb, and he changes the bulb at the top. If I did that, I would just jump off and parachute off, I think. Ooh. I would go up, change the bulb, parachute off. This is a good gig. 20K? Come on, man. And all he does is he has two he has two little harnesses that he hooks on. This I, is the, this part is the hard it, part. Yeah. yeah. It gets sketchy at the top. Why don't they just do a ladder all the way up? And here he goes. Imagine he drops the bulb. <laughs> Takes a selfie. Look at that, though. Oh, they got the drone up. I don't like that. But imagine just jumping off at the end and just parachuting. That'd be so much easier. Fair. Mm. Fair. Yeah. Um, kid crashes. You've thought about this a lot. Yeah. Clearly. Kid crashes car with dad. This this video. It's an uplifting gold, but it made me furious for some reason. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh my God. 
Go on, give it a guess. Let's change. Oh, no! no! Sorry. It's alright. It's no problem. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> That's just what happens when you teach your kid to drive sometimes. If you got a little spaz kid who got glasses. Yeah, I don't know. That made me mad. The kid didn't even care. The kid didn't even care, and then the dad should have been mad. I don't know. Yeah. The dynamics felt fake to me. Like, I didn't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. So. I can't relate to that. Exactly. I can't relate to that at all. But it's nice that the dad didn't care and everyone's safe and you learn how to drive. There's some, you know, learning curve to it. But sure. But I, I guess can't relate. I, I can't relate. And I guess you also found out your son does not have that dog in him. Yeah. He's not really athletic. He's got those goofy glasses. So I, I was an easy I was easy to train to drive the car. Yeah. I was very good at it. I was merging in traffic. I knew how to do everything. <laughs> like I said, I was very athletic. All right. The girl who says when for the cheese. This is uh, probably my favorite clip. Okay, you tell me when, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Straight into your water? Absolutely, ma'am. You got it. Tell me when. Stop. Straight into my mouth. Oh, why, certainly. Is that enough, ma'am? Okay. That's good. Yeah, all right. We're Isn't doing that bits. nice? Olive Garden lady plays in the game. Yeah, that's nice uplifting stuff. I like that. Don't get too depressed about all the crime and the people getting pushed in front of the subways or whatever. And how dumb most of society is now and how even the college professors are idiots and uh, people with low IQs are demanding $3 million just for nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all that, all that weird stuff that's going on in the world. Yeah. College and, is 70000 a year and no one knows anything. And the professor's a criminal. and <laughs> She threatens people with machetes and needs to go to jail and has court dates and stuff. Just don't worry about that. Don't. Don't focus on that too much. Yeah, don't don't focus on that. All right, last one, the kid rodeo. Oh yeah, last clip. True uplifting here. Four years old. There we go. Isn't that nice? Isn't that uplifting? That's a good activity. All right. Well, that's the end of the episode. As always, uh, not as always, but as of the last few weeks, we're going to shout out a small business. Yeah. Um, this week, we are shouting out Cox. What's it called? Cox Custom Rugs. Cox Custom Rugs. They made an awesome Fleckus Talks rug for us, as you can see here in the background. It looks very cool. It has been sent to us. It's on its way. It looks awesome. They did it for free. They like us. Uh, so check them out. Follow them on Instagram. They're linked in the description. Order a custom rug. If you're in the market for a custom rug, they do a great job. It's super high quality. They're America first based uh, patriotic people who aren't going to make a transgender rug yeah they approached us like they liked the show they were like hey can i make a rug for you guys yep. so um follow them on instagram and you know maybe get a rug i don't know get, get a, a rug. rug follow them on instagram get a rug comment on their posts engage uh check them out you'll like it get some cool custom rugs they're friends of the show it's our network it's our community you guys should support them they support us uh and then also if you have a small business that wants a shout out email Zach at FleckusTalks.com, Z-A-C-H at FleckusTalks.com. Send us about uh, a little blurb about your business. Tell us what you guys make. Uh, if you guys are able to send us a product like the custom rug, that would be cool. Maybe have to send two because Richard Rapoy gets mad when <laughs> I take all the products if we get one. Uh, and we'll shout you guys out and we'll show your product. We'll do this at the end of the show every week. It's kind of a cool little thing. Uh, and then also make sure you guys uh, join Pulse Plus. We're going to have Bonus Land coming out in just a few minutes. So if you join Pulse Plus, you can go get Bonus Land after hours footage content right now on FleckusTalks.com. Go there today. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.